Welcome back to the mystical land of Coverdane, where we three monks try to compose a magical item known as the Cover Dakota Kong, so we can raise an army of deathless cover warriors and soon take over the world. Yes! Yes! <laughs> yes. Fantasy February is hot. Yeah, Fantasy February. All right, guys. So this episode is very image heavy. You can go to CoverDecoder.com and you can click on the episode and you will get a link to the slides. And today we are talking about Prydain. Oh, the yes, magical the land of Prydain. of Prydain. So the good. The magical land of Prydain. And, and I, it, I, I, love I you, ended John up Hurt. here because... <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, I ended up here because this, the actor who did uh, the voice for, for Gandalf in the 1977 Hobbit... Um, I should probably get his name. <laughs> John Huston. It was a John Huston. The famous director cool. was That's the right. voice of Gandalf. I believe it's John Huston. John Huston, the voice of Gandalf. He also introed slinging spells. <laughs> he also introed um, the Disney Black Cauldron movie. Yes. He, he introed oh, the, the Mystic I Lands of Prydain. I have this on VHS. I <laughs> plop it into my tape slot all the time. My yeah. I, I love to show this to my children. It has yes. it has skeletons, it has mist and dragons and things <laughs> this this the horn king dissolves into a cauldron and turns yes. into goo. The skeletal the skeletal yes. warriors is so so epic. It's so I good. The his owner of this lizard opera. creature, his goblin sidekick companion, he was the creeper. Abusing. Dude, creeper. Yeah. Oh, you know what's yeah, cool so, about this so, movie too, folks? This yeah. movie had more more footage that was considered. Yes. The, the studio considered it too dark for the movie because they watched. The, they saw the movie and they were like, "Holy shit." This is no 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 no. We can't sh- we can't show this. Yeah. We can't. So they cut they cut a bunch of stuff out of the movie because it was too dark and and got Where rid of it. Where's the footage? It's dude. Yes. Where is it? It's Disney. It's, yeah, it's yeah, locked it, it's... away in the ma- the mouse dragon is is sitting on it. Like oh, <laughs> you're not getting this shit. Oh. Yeah. What what what, <laughs> what movie was it that you were talking about, Bringineer from the Tolkien that 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 could have been. That is missing all of this footage. Oh no, that was a totally Conan the Destroyer. Oh, that was, was Conan. Yeah, we're, we're yeah talking that was, Conan. We were talking yeah. to Conan. That's when we were talking. Yeah, we were <laughs> we were talking to Vidar about the the Conan that could have been, and um, yes, Disney made this movie. They made the Black Cauldron, and I movie. too want to know about the Black Cauldron that could have been. Yeah, the story that that uh, Tapes is referring to is of uh, Jeffrey Katzenberger. Now this movie uh the rights were optioned way back in 1971 ollie johnson one of the great uh uh, nine old men of disney thought it could be (laughs) as good as snow white but they really couldn't tackle the heavy material and the and the dense volumes and so later on the newer animators got a hold of the material and they went really edgy with it in fact jeffrey katzenberger saw it and thought they were going to get an r rating so he flipped out <laughs> he went into the editing room personally and started hacking this poor movie into the splintered Dude, sparks classic were flying we, people yeah, were staring we horrified he yeah, just yeah, slashes yeah. it yeah mickey mouse I, i want my r-rated black cauldron i Disney. want it, Give it so to me. bad like when we go back in time not to like do good things but like to make sure that the uh the david spade uh uh, Chris Farley <laughs> Hobbit gets made. We're gonna stop off at this moment, and we're gonna we're gonna tie up Jeffrey Kassenberger so he can get his mitts off of our movie, and and, and save uh, Conan the Destroyer too. Yep, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna save all of the R-rated movies. Now, if you remember, the Hobbit, the 1977 Hobbit, was made for three million. This movie was made for twenty five million. And when you watch it, you can see the quality of animation is yeah. is beautiful. So but good. it is at a time when Disney doesn't know who they are. Correct. And um, they're they're trying out different things. That being said, I think it's a pretty good adaptation. I don't mind that um, the the Horn King is a combination of two characters. Dalbin is a combination of two characters. Yeah. Um, well, they're I trying think- to cram how many books into one movie. 
two books, and these are not it's these are not thin books. Yeah, these are not thin books, the, and and I think they do a pretty good job of of keeping stuff in to keep the story moving. I think probably the biggest. Um, thing that I don't like about it is Alon Wee is a little bit water, watered down in the books. She's a lot more... Yeah. Um, oh, she's fiery. Person, she's fiery. She's got this big personality, and and in many ways, she's the one um, leading the band uh, forward. But right here, I've got the poster and then also the art on the book that they, they put out during the movie to try Dude, and even the poster the is scary. Such You've a got like your poster. magical characters in the front, and then holy... Uh, I don't know if we should take him to see this, Bill. Nah, shut up. It's going to be great for him. They're going to yeah, love it. It's going to be great. Look at this Horn King. He's <laughs> So we've got uh, an amazing layout here. So for front and center is the Black Cauldron spilling forth its green mm. uh, farty stench. And, the Black Cauldron. Uh, um, and then in the mid-ground, you have the characters who are very brightly colored uh, they look sort of like uh, cells. C- cells, yeah, the yeah. Cell. yeah. They look like that raw, colorful cell art. And then you have these amazingly painted evil trees with these sort oh. of uh, howling faces. Tree They're not even in the movie. I love them. Not even in the movie, but they look amazing. <laughs> and then a towering above them all is the Horn King yeah. and Creeper sort of leering out. You know what, you over, know what I don't uh, like the trees. about this poster is that they framed it in white. I, I I don't mind they that, it, it that it was like a lighter I, color, but I, I think it's great. I wish it was like I think darker. It's great. It's I too, kind of like it. It it, it, it makes yeah. it makes it oppressive. It makes it a little bit more oppressive. Yeah. Um, well, what's cool is is it's framed. The actual art is framed in uh, a rectangle, but the Horn King and yes. the uh, the farty the farty cloud coming out of mm. the cauldron, they're not. They're not uh, trapped within the box. No, it's they're, coming they're, out of you. They're coming out and <laughs> and um, leaving the confines of this little rectangle, yes, and capturing. Uh, which makes him look even more powerful over these little characters. Do you it, see? Do you see the little cauldron born hiding in the trees with their with their swords? Oh yes. yeah, I didn't notice There's that. There's a lot going on in this cover. This was done by um, Paul Wenzel. Oh, he, he did oh, a lot that's of so cool. Um, a lot of posters for Disney. Um, if you look at his body of work, it's pretty cool. But this, to me, is probably one of the one of the coolest things that he did, and uh, he probably had a lot of fun with it. I, I'm totally conjecture here, but if if you're sitting there like you know jamming away at Mickey Mouse's you know fiftieth movie, right. it, it, this this lands on your desk, and you're like, yeah, oh yeah. Finally, Dude, finally, was, I get to do something artists, a little, like, little bit farty. Blowing off all the steam that they pent up doing like princess <laughs> movies for the last 20 right. years. Finally, they're going to have things with swords and monsters. Oh. Right. And the Horn King is a, is, is a cool character. And, and finally I've got the VHS that oh, I own um, here. VHS. I just want to put it inside bad, me. I just want it's not bad good. Guy. Slot. Oh, this is, this is that clamshell, that gross white. Oh, it's, Disney clamshell, beautiful, yeah. and I love it. The, oh, I hate the the Disney clamshell. Yeah. The you image, think you, you think paper cuts are bad? Sad. Uh, hey, partner, you think paper cuts are bad? Wait till you get cut by one of these VHS here. That's right. You're gonna need stitches. It's oh, funny man. too, because clearly when they they release the movie, they're like, well, we gotta try and make it seem a little more fun. Exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. and then here's an awkward thing. You you have um, Taryn, um, the pink cape stand. Standing on uh, do it, the, Dobbin. The, the 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 cauldron there with the light coming out, and then like an afterthought, you have the Gurgi character <laughs> just sort of like hanging on the edge, like yeah. total afterthought. Like it would have been perfect without it, but some art director was like, oh, I, I think you need to put Gurgi in there. Just, I like Gurgi. Yeah, the kids love Gurgi. The, the kids Gurgi love Gurgi. Put them yeah, on that cover. The the reissue of this is going to have Tarn skin melting off into the cauldron there. <laughs> <laughs> well if we click on to the next slide i want to tell you how i got here um honestly this show was born out of the the token episode the token episode was so much fun for me yep. and um you know then we, then we ripped into talking to the vidar and it, it you know this kind of fantasy was was something that um, really just permeated our childhoods and my childhood. And um, what do, what do you do when you're a child and you want to read um, all of the Lord of the Rings? 
and you and you start going through the Hobbit, and you find yourself fall asleep only to wake up four hours later, covered in drool, on page five. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> what do you what do you do at that moment? Well, you find you, uh, you, you find gas you station. Turn to the Chronicles of Prydain. <laughs> you turn to the Chronicles of Prydain. Um, and that's kind of what happened with this show because I had originally wanted to do a a history of Tolkien um, covers and kind of go through the different decades, and uh, we just couldn't do it. And like Bridgeneer said, we could only get a little pinch of that Tolkien uh, cocaine. And um, yeah. but with Chronicles of Prydain, we might be able to do it. And I'll just preface that by saying, with each of the artists that we're about to cover, I'm going to tell you the name of the artist and usually the the medium that they use. But um, I'm going to link to their website and more information about them. I'm not going to be able to go into their whole history like we do with a deep dive. Yeah. But we're going to start with Lloyd Alexander. Oh, look, look at, at him. him. Look at he's him. Just, look at he's just watching the kitty fufia. <laughs> He's he's I going in the pocket. Him. Come here. He's going in the pocket. <laughs> he he looks like an emaciated uh, David Cronenberg. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he really he does. Spent like too much time walked. in the cauldron. Yeah, he I think like he's he going to eat that cat. <laughs> look at him! Look at him as the old man with his like wispy hair. He looks like he walked out of Avalon. He looks like he walked out of an Arthurian legend. He 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 does like he, he was a a care, he was locked in a a monastery somewhere. Well, dude, his name came is, out and is a twenty first century. Lloyd century. Alexander. If that's not a regal name, I don't know what is. Sir Lloyd, Lloyd. Alexander. <laughs> well, he was born in Philadelphia. His father was a stockbroker, and they were very much affected by the, uh, the Philadelphia. Great this guy's not English. No, no, this is, this guy is Dude, this is Walmart Tolkien. This guy is like us. He is, he's, 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 he's an American kid reading Tolkien, reading fantasy and going, yeah. I could do that. Um, I could be a pig keeper too. Look at me, Dolpin. Um, Yeah. (laughs) So with, with the Great Depression affecting him, he started working at a, at uh, 15 as a bank messenger, but he was always reading and he always wanted to be a writer and his time as a bank messenger later would influence his first book. Um, he did attend one term in a college that was right down the road, but he decided that a writer needs adventure. So he enlisted in the army for Mountains. World War II. Mountains. He, yeah, he went into World War II. Um, he Nothing spent time like in killing Texas. Nazis for a little adventure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give you adventure down the barrel yeah. of my gun, Mac. The, they're the orcs of uh, the orcs of the 1930s. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he went to Texas and then um, then to Wales and then Germany. Um, but his time <laughs> in Wales, and I might maybe argue Texas a little bit, but I would say his, his time in Wales really got him to fall in love with the Welsh language, uh, Welsh uh, literature, and most of all, mm. Welsh landscapes and castles. Dude, and you got to have them castles. Appearance. Yeah. You got to have... Dude, you go up and you touch the, the, the gritty... Crumbling stone, stone. You just yeah. and, and you smell how them. You, you get between not? the bricks. That some, yeah. that some poor surf, freaking with a chisel, like chiseled <laughs> out of a oh, cliff God, somewhere, and then dragged it <laughs> on his geez. emaciated back. Stones. Some... I've got to chisel out stones every day, so <laughs> later inspire some Philadelphian uh, peasant to write his, his series. Yeah, this is right. just great. I go yeah. into the torture chamber, <laughs> and the executioner's got me wife on the rack. Who's his wife? Who is the executioner? Give, give your brother. Thumb screws. <laughs> hey, who's your brother? <laughs> he chopped the hood off me, brother. I thought he was an executioner, me, evil. <laughs> but um, he had said about his experience in well, Wales that um, part of the it was part of the raw material for the the Perdane per books. Um, his stories would draw themes and ideas. And um, were inspired by Welsh folklore, particularly from the stories collected in the Mabinogion. There's a two volume, Ooh. two volumes of Welsh uh, uh, legends and traditions. I will have to look into the Mabinogion. Yeah, so this is what led to the Chronicles of Prydain, and this was Lloyd Alexander's baby. Now, um, let's take a look at the first issues. Oh man, it's that. That is 
the epitome of that 60s yeah. style. Yep. That, I, that high uh, fantasy. This is that. I gave I gave the idea to my uh, niece, and for a quarter, she drew the art. Yeah, she's and that, really into <laughs> Art <laughs> Nouveau <laughs> right now. Um, yeah. I love the witches well, this- of Endor down there at the bottom. <laughs> Yub yub. Um, <laughs> <laughs> What's this cat doing well, with? Oh, that's. Oh, I get it. It's why don't you harp. describe? Okay, why don't you just describe the book of three for us here? Uh, okay, so the book of three contains what looks like that the, the first book in the series, style the uh, Sleeping Beauty kind of art, which is cool. Flat. It's two dimensional. It's flat. You've got a pig being fucking trampled by this giant white horse. <laughs> Um, and on its back is, I'm assuming, Tarin with a horrid bowl cut. Uh, yeah. And, that peasant, um, yeah, that peasant cut. Yeah, and Alonwi on his back. And then there's a, like, a Alice in Wonderland castle with a checkerboard. Cardboard cutout castle. And then in the yeah. back is, like, the one thing I like, which is this court of trees with the purpley uh, background. But, I mean, really... The problem with this cover is this could be just some any medieval historical text. This doesn't yeah, right. it doesn't inspire the feeling of fantasy, but more like history. Yes. Right. Well, yeah, this was the the first edition. They were published um, 1969 mm-hmm. um, by Holt, Reinhardt, and Winston. Uh, this is cover art by Evelyn Ness, and that's her up there looking very art studentish yes. in front of her paintings. Yes. Um, you know, I just really love um, the art from the from the medieval the times. Because, yes, um, when the pre Lord Winslet before was three dimensions was a thing. Block um, <laughs> we're, we're sorry to mock you, Evelyn. Uh, she she's a Michigan native, and she. Created oh, yeah. these covers um, with a mixed media collage, a lot of cutouts, pencil, ink, mm. and tempura. Oh, that's um, cool. What's tempura? Yeah, and Isn't that like something you eat? That, that's a that's that a vegan crap. Rat right fast. It's <laughs> it's not it's not a, a deep fried Japanese uh, yeah. uh, shrimp. Mm-mm. Oh, yeah, I love that's those. Right. That's right. I could eat um, probably thirteen pounds of it. At the uh, buffet night at uh, at at Tang's. That's right. Twenty um, minutes. <laughs> so I've got some other. So w- <laughs> what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to put the book of three, and then I'm going to then put images that I I thought were her best covers. Now she did all of the books, and you guys can look those covers up. But I've got the black cauldron here in the middle with the I witches like of Indoor. One. I like I that like one. Pretty I, good. I do like yeah. it. It's super fun. It reminds me of what's, um, what's wrong with the cauldron. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the lumpy cauldron. It's, the lumpy, yeah, dude. it's like made it's by somebody who doesn't know how a cauldron right works. Now. It's got to be able to fit all three of them. They they bathe in there. All right, <laughs> the, the soup is there is their flavor. Uh, yeah. I I it reminds me. You know, speaking of Disney, it reminds me a lot of if you see um, sketches or imagery from Haunted Mansion, the three ghosts oh, in that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It reminds me a lot of that. But this one I like a lot more. It's a lot more interesting. A lot more spooky. Yeah. And then I've got the uh, the castle of Lear here, um, with with the giant cat and uh, Tarin's uh, raven caw. This one's and, pretty um, cool. He had a raven. Yeah, he got a raven. Yeah. Oh. He collected many many things along many his different creatures. Yeah, and and one of the things that that's it's a little bit rough about reading these books is that Tarin's a little shit kid. Oh, <laughs> he's the worst. <laughs> he's a little shit, but by yep. the end of it, he he's a man. You, you 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 watch him grow and you grow with him and I think what's cool about um, the way Taran is written and I, I don't really appreciate that in, until I got older but it, he he acts like a kid acts he he's mm-hmm. impetuous he doesn't think things through he picks up the sword and goes running forward and I'm gonna um, be a knight I'm a knight yeah and he and he and some he, forty one says again. the wrong thing and he acts like a man even though he's still a boy and um, I think. I think a part of that is probably drawn from Lloyd as his time working so young at the age of 15. And then also, um, instead of writing a character that is the chosen one, we get we get this um, incredibly flawed boy that gets to go on these yeah. adventures. And a lot of times he is the Bucky Barnes to the Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
His he's it's hard to read. He makes he makes those early books somewhat hard to read. They're hard to read because he's so freaking annoying. You just want to reach and slap him in the right. face. <laughs> well, and and you've got you've got Gwydion who like doesn't have the ability to fart, and if he does, they don't smell. They probably smell like cookies. <laughs> I mean, he is he is the Captain America of these of these books, and he is flawless. Um, yep. Which in the in Welsh legend, that character was not flawless. He did some dirty things. But if we click thing. to the next slide, real quick, we're I will see, say one thing that's yeah. that I, I I feel like with these covers. That uh, to Miss Ness's, you know, credit here is judging by the picture on behind her fancy mattress there. I don't feel like fantasy was probably her wheelhouse necessarily. So I think no. this was pro. I, I I think these are good for what they are, but yeah. I don't think this was she needed. She needed coke money. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> and, and again, these are these. You're going to see this as we progress through the timeline, but these are reflecting of the time period. This is 69. Yeah. This style, the the whimsical, like um, f- fantastic children's book style, was really in. But then we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna jump in a uh, cruiser and we're gonna cruise yes. on into the 1979 oh, near the no. 80s, yes. and Who, we're gonna see is... Mr. Don no. Mates. No, no. We get into. Uh, Things are starting to look a little more D and D. Yeah. Look at well, Don, Don Mace. I don't know if yeah. I want to look at him. <laughs> hey there. Hey, well, I got my studio. <laughs> I, I got more cool art over here in my uh, painting van. <laughs> oh no, dude, he's got the gold chain. He's got the the thick. <laughs> no. uh, he's got the Tom Selleck mustache. Don't he's go in his padded guy. basement. You know this guy was sitting outside the door of a chopper with a machine gun, mowing down Charlie, sucking on a yeah. big old cigar. <laughs> like a sexual Tyrannosaurus. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and, and his his covers are very Frenzetta-esque. Or Frenzetta-esque. Oh, so, um, Bringer, why don't you tackle the Book of Three here? Oh, oh see, this see, is such this, a freaking this amazing the, cover. The, this this first cover just brings back so many memories because I, I first learned about, uh, I knew about the Black Cauldron for a long time. I thought it was just the coolest thing, but I didn't realize it was attached to a book series. And you would think like, oh, the Black Cauldron, that's the first one. Yeah, man. Like, no, the the Book of Three is the first one. And so I saw this book and uh, I thought it looked really cool. I had no idea it was attached to the um, to the series. Or had anything to do with the Black Cauldron. Um, but anyways, uh, memories aside, what you have here is you've got uh, just the worst yellow. I mean, the best, worst. Bathed in cum, folks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the fa- the, the, the faded, gesso color is cum. <laughs> faded yellow. <laughs> just if Yeah, if, if you're new. dollar twenty-five. It, this book is a dollar twenty-five. People, <laughs> this was found in, in the uh, section called uh, Cumber Decoder. It, you know, if <laughs> if you go outside of a, of a Walmart uh, or a Kmart and you wander around the parking lot, you'll find enough loose change to purchase this book yes. in about an hour. <laughs> and you will, because look at this freaking cover. Both. So of what these. you got here is you've got the Horn King, uh, just riding this this black horse. He's got a red, like crimson blood red cloak on. He's got uh, one hell of a scary looking skull head uh, antlers coming out. He's got a red glove clutching this silver blade. He just looks awesome. He's tramping. He's just tramping through this amazing forest. That's just like, what is that? Ivy, just Ivy everywhere. And then Ter- uh, uh, Ter- Taran's Taran. got like an ice pick. <laughs> he's got like an ice pick, <laughs> and he uh, he's dressed in this white sort of. He doesn't look. I mean, he's painted well. He just looked page boy cut. Uh, just yeah. Uh, the, he, the, uh, he, he just he just he came out of the cool. uh, the sauna that was in the yeah. forest there. <laughs> Dude, yeah. the Horn yeah. King is fleeing from his hairdo. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the interesting thing about this cover is that you get a sense of the the Horned King. The Horned King is not like the Disney's Horned King. He's actually um, he's actually a warrior. He's the champion. Yeah. Um, he's actually the champion of Iran. Iran is the Dark Wizard. He yeah. is the, the 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 one to beat. He's the final boss. But um, but Horn yeah, King's the mini boss. The Horn King is the mini boss. He's the champion, and um, he is not a wizard in this. He is a warlord. And right over here, I've the got Skullfish. Um, Skullfish. I've got another um, one of his books. One of my one of the ones I like the best out of out of the uh, the four or five that he did. And this is the Black Cauldron. Dude, look at that blue. Oh, that look so at that good. blue. And he just blue. finished and, and taking a, a wicked shit in that cauldron, and they are pissed. And, <laughs> and the witches caught him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so in this one, you actually have a decent-looking cauldron, not some lumpy malformed no, thing. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, and Terran's actually got his sword. He's put his ice pick away. Um, and the witches are coming mm. out, looking like your... Uh, grandmother's weird friends who come over yeah. to yeah. play. Dude, uh, totally. cheesy. They've got like their you just little, like, pendulums their tarot that card tell the section. truth and shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I didn't know it was tarot card night. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hold on. Um, what's, what's cool yeah. about his, his oil style is definitely more of that kind of chalky, you know, there's, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. there's, which is so cool folks. It was really there's cool talking with them. Um, yeah. It was really cool talking with Vidar. We got a little more insight into that into the the world of oil painting but the oil yeah world. definitely he's got he's got that more uh textured sort of uh uh, earthy tone kind of thing going on here. There's a little bit of like you know that that like artistic bleed. There's a little bit of chance yeah. going on. The, yep. the smoke is bubbling out. You can see little speckles and spots of the the paint mixing weird. And I, I love that shit. Yeah, I'm gonna say one thing though. Taryn's arms look way weird. Uh, the, yeah, they, the, look your your <laughs> yeah. shoulders. He's your got the shoulders, pirate shirt. Your shoulders do not bend that way to allow your arms they do after you've taken the 20 pound shit that he did in that cauldron you're all kinds of limber after one of those so what what, what Taryn looks like is she he should have another two arms on the other side yeah. like he looks like he should be a forearm being um <laughs> wow you're totally they're, right they're, dude you can do listen yeah. when you Taran take those of mars sun, yeah <laughs> when you take those sunday morning shits you you can do all kinds of yoga <laughs> i stretch so and, well um, Last note on this, uh, just just in case you're wondering, um, this this particular black cauldron costs twenty five more cents yep, than yep, the book yep, of yep, three. You got to pay so for the. Extra you might pages. have to um, start looking outside J.C. Penney's instead, um, right? As you know, more more change high class change. Yes. And finally, I've got to implore you guys to click on this. Um, Click on this link to his website and look through his website. He's got some amazing fantasy art on there. He wants um, you to. all this like awesome oil paintings. Um, I, I really had to hold myself back and st stick to the Chronicles of Pernain because um, I could have I could have just done a whole episode on his uh, catalog. But let's move on to the next uh, slide. My favorite Whoa, ones. Oh, this is I've never seen these. Yeah, these, these are the ones that I are my favorites. Yeah, I have these the nestled gently witch. in the box. Oh, yeah. <laughs> why don't yes. you Why don't you talk about this with the Book of Three, which is the first cover here with the 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 Horn King, dude? Okay, so the Book of Three. So first of all, this must be a pretty iconic scene in the film. In the sorry, in the um, in the books, because again, we have a forest scene. Uh, Taran's got his. This time, it's a dagger, not an ice pick. Uh, but you've got this glade, this beautiful. Uh, green, blue, cool glade, um, and there's a a funnel of light shining down um, in the background, and you have, again, rearing up the Horn King uh, with his sword up high, with his Skeletor antler head in this bright red uh, cloak, and it's just red oh, and blue and dark tones, and Man, this is such a cool striking image. Yeah. Yeah, this is um this is the the ones that I'm familiar with. Now th these uh wow. these pieces of work are done by uh Belgian artist Jean-Leon Hunes. Oh, you and killed he does it, Jean Leon. Not, 
Jean Lyon. He 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 does not have a website. Um, he's on a bunch of fine art websites, which is actually where I got the um, the two images on this slide, um, and then the book in the middle. And what's what's really cool about so these were made in 1980, right on the heels of, of Don Mates, but these were done for the pocketbook editions. And um, something we see a lot is these huge paintings, these huge epic paintings that we, um, you know, that we want to create and we want to be a part of, but they're going to take us a week to do. And what's cool about these drawings, these beautiful, vibrant, lush drawings, is they are done with what watercolor pencil on paper. Oh, and that's this so first cool. one with the Horn King, it's only. Um, 9.8 inches by six inches. Um, yeah, and one of the and one of the things that I I find myself running into sometimes is when I do digital art, especially because I can blow it up and move it on. I actually put too much detail in smaller things, and I think I find that it helps to sketch out and get your um, your layout in the actual size that you're going to see it. So if you're doing a paperback book that's only nine by six inches. Um, a lot of times it, it helps to actually do it in that size so that you see what the print is going to see. And um, I think he did an amazing job with, oh, with this the is, tiny little This is incredible. Did you, so did you say, um, well, uh, let's see, uh, water, watercolor yeah. pencil? So watercolor, watercolor and pencil. pencil or is it a watercolor pencil? No, it's, 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 it's a, that's a, a new colored thing. pencil. Yeah, it's a colored pencil with a soft lead that you can actually dip into water, or you can actually lay the what? pencil down and take water mm -hmm. and um, take water, and you can dry, you can wet that that pigment, and it'll actually turn into watercolor. That's I'm guessing. At, yeah, I'm guessing yeah. what he was doing was he was dipping the tips, if that, into the water to get tips. those. You got to dip the tip to get that dip hot pigment. Tips. Yeah, and he was getting really, really thick, vibrant pig yeah. pigment from that thick, vibrant tip dip. <laughs> um, here well, in his, the middle, his theme that? is these. He's got these really lush, um, oh, cool yeah. colors, and mm -hmm. there's always a figure in red, like in the middle, a lawnway, uh, just. She looks badass, dude. Red, yeah. She's got red, a freaking uh, sword garments, on her shoulder. Red, red hair yeah. is incredibly striking. And 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 the witches are really. We're talking about the black cauldron, and I've got the image here with the uh, the book border, so you can see what the books were looking like. Yeah. Even the 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 text with Lloyd Alexander's um, name is done really. Really, in a cool way. It oh, doesn't. Yeah. Um, it doesn't take away from the title, the Black Cauldron, because it's kind of it's faded. But yeah, even the witches are really well done. They've got they've their personalities fit their faces. I don't normally so much like more personality of, in these. Yeah, faces on my covers, but ah, these are really well done, and yeah. and and they're even they're turned in a way that way where you're just getting um, an expression. So it's not it's not a, a total photograph. But, See, and this um, is a white border done for me right because yeah. Yeah, there's it's slim. The margins of it are slim. So I'm right. looking at the image and I'm looking at the name. I'm not looking at the shit around it. Uh, this is such a cool, effective right. cover. I love it. I love this. Yeah. And we, we hate quotes on our covers, but if you're going to do it, I guess this is the right way to do it because you've yep. got, you've got the, the, the image framed well. We've got the beautiful Lloyd Alexander text, and at the top it says, Taran fights to save his <laughs> homeland from an army of deathless warriors. And Who um, wouldn't want to read that? At the very top, yeah. And I have to say, looking through all the different artists on here, and I wish I could get a, a image of John Leon on here. You could see his face, um, but I could not. So it gave me more room to put more covers on here. That's because his face um, is in the next uh, image here. It, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm looking through all <laughs> oh, these covers, and I have, like, my favorite ones are from each different artist. Most of them, like, I think Hune's hit it on the, the nail on the head for me the most. But the one that I feel like he he just knocked it out of the park with and just really um, just really is a great moment in the book of uh, Tar and the Wanderer mm. where he's facing off against Mordo here. Mordo. Who is a, a Mordo, which he is a uh, he's a wizard with this magical half moon talisman. And he is actually uh, able to go into the Fey lands and he's uh, pillaging the Fey, which is which is a big deal. Dude, That's so cool. And this is the same. The watercolor. Man, this is awesome. 
Look at the, look at the de- lighting effects. Look at the li- look at the detail this fucker got, man. Yeah. This just like, and again, uh, well, no, this is just this is a whole new thing for me. This is a whole new experience, folks. I didn't know watercolor pencil existed. This is new. Yeah, and and it's really well this. done. I think I th- I love this depiction of Mordo. A lot of times with Tar and the Tar and the Wanderer, um, they want to uh, depict that scene. And I just I love this one. It's so close. It's stifling. Um, you get the sense that all of a sudden that that amulet lit up, and he was right there in front of Taran. And Taran's you know <laughs> again he's he's uh, <laughs> yeah get back. <laughs> he's like, hey man, you want to try some moonbeams? Uh, would no, you like man. to try? It's a hot dog get walker away from now. Me. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Ham could do a lot. Ham eye mask could do a lot for you. Under the half moon, you um, shall be reborn. Yeah, our our uh, our uh, health expert select wiener there. But uh, again, <laughs> Brendan's right. He's got this pop of red. Taran's in the pop of red. And 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 I'll leave you with um, with finally this this watercolor uh, pencil image was done again on a twelve by seven wow. um, piece of paper and. It's it's a little bit bigger than the other one, but it's Incredible. still it's small. He must have had tiny hands. You guys can hands. create beautiful. <laughs> do you think uh, <laughs> just in a, in, a, in a microscope? Do you think he does this on board or paper or what do you think? It said I've he did grain. it. He did it on paper and then it was set on board. And I actually I don't have okay. the prices, but I found these two images um, on a fine art auction website. Um, and they had the originals on the board. It was kind of cool to see it sitting there, um, you know, a little piece of history, and it's just like that paperback book before it's a paperback book. And there was only the um, the two images uh, that I found. I didn't find the other paintings. Well, we're, we're now leaving the 80s to uh, to to slide into the 90s. To the, ni- the mm. Sega 90s for the, the video do, game do, releases do, here. Do, 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 do. These, these are great. Dude, this is yeah. text based. This is vid- some Vidarism right yeah. here. No, Listen. these are these are choose your own adventure. Yeah, uh, yeah, tell, yeah, tell yeah Alexander. Here. Book of three. So, okay, so uh, the colors, the colors. <laughs> we are being just blasted with color here, um, dude. Again, it's that it's dude. that workout video green and yeah. blue. There's more colors here than your, um, you know, scented. Highlighter markers used to sniff as a kid. I, I know those. I, <laughs> I love those. The, the licorice, the black That's licorice not is my lime. favorite. Of course, um, of course, of all the flavors that you could huff, Brengineer's favorite is black licorice. Dude, <laughs> I'm, su- I'm surprised it wasn't Cadillac brown. <laughs> yeah. So brown, so brown was chocolate and it was delicious too. <laughs> so what we have here is uh, let's just go through all of the borders because for some reason they just can't release these books without having a border yeah. of some kind dude but look uh, at the colors of the borders you've got you've got acid green in the middle i'm talking toxic chernobyl Weird. sludge oh dude otter um, po- otter pop green you've got you've got ice blue uh <laughs> like kool-aid kool-aid ice blue raspberry <laughs> blue and then you candy have, apple uh, red Candy apple red for the backgrounds and the colors of the actual art, which the art is amazing. Um, I love the way Taryn looks, the Horn King. There's a little bit more of like a, um, a Britain, like it's very like a great Britain feel in the clothing, you know, that medieval, uh, the chainmail coifs, um, uh, Terran's clothes, Elanway's clothes, things like that. It's definitely that more style of um, old Great Britain. But, um, man, the colors are just, like, really over the top, like highlighters. Like, they did this uh, in Office Supply highlighters or something. Oh, yeah. I could just hear Uh, that 8-bit music playing. Yeah. Well, I'm opening (laughs) this. Yeah, this is totally Sega Box. I really like it. Um, I also really like how they uh, did Gurgi. And and the movie, yeah. and it the looks movie like a, he's a, they made he's a Gurgi, little monkey guy. They made Gurgi look like my dad. Like, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> my, 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 dad dad, <laughs> my dad looks straight up like Gurgi. <laughs> I kid you not. <laughs> that puffy but, white hair. The yeah, he's even hair, got like dude. the white shoulder pads on his on yeah. his arms. <laughs> But Gurgi here, 
Gurgi here looks like uh, definitely a, 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 some sort of strange uh, simian uh, half ape, half man kind of weird thing. I like yeah, it. Yeah, dude. He's like a weird, creepy Dr. Seuss thing. Hominid. Yeah. Oh, he looks like he smells real bad. <laughs> well, Which yeah. In the book, he's described as having leaves and twigs all up in his fur. I will say, like, in the Welsh mythology, there is the name Gurgi, and there's not a whole lot explaining him, but it may come from the description of a character who's like a silvery wolf man kind of a character. Mm. Mm. Um, so maybe that's silvery where they were drawing Wolfman. for the little, the little dog man from. Uh, from the Disney version, but um, as long as he's obsessed yeah, these, with apples, we're all good. We're all crunchings. Um, <laughs> I, I have to say, when I listened to the audiobooks of these, the way they voiced Gurgi, the guy voiced Gurgi, wasn't I, I wasn't feeling it. I wasn't feeling this voice actor because his Gurgi was oh munchings and crunchings for the Gurgi. Oh, it was like an ogre. It was like oh, a, sh- no. a Shrekie. Oh, yeah. He was just like this depressed, like uh, you know, uh, eighty-year-old, uh, you know, Londoner, but. Uh, <laughs> The, the, these pies. covers were done by uh, Jody Lee. Jody Lee so is good. a master of fantasy Dude, art. You've got to go check out her website. It. She is. She is great. I, I still prefer Hunes a little bit, but I, yeah. I have to say her depictions of the characters are, are pretty good. Um, Henwin is a big girl. She is a full-size <laughs> She's a sow, real pig. And that is how she is in the book. She's not this yeah. little pot belly little cutie. No. Um, she's, she is a, she is a full grown pig, pig mama. And, um, she can there's make no way in hell, and make there is no way in hell that Tar- Taran is holding on to her and keeping her from taking off into the forest. Well, dude, on this leads, very, on this you know, very last the image, it's them looking really guiltily at this fire because they know that they're cooking headwind. That yeah. you know, nice. you know what hit me today when I was looking at <laughs> when I was looking at this this image. So this is depicting um, in the High King when Fluter Flam, the uh, the bard who's, who's not an old man. Yeah, he's not yeah. an old man. He's kind of a he's kind of a young um, you know sting. He has a Thade's haircut from Dune. Yeah, um, and Dude, he has to diaper? burn his harp. Yeah, he has That's to burn right, his harp he does. to keep them warm. And um, what happens is the music starts flowing out of the harp. And you've got the whole cast of characters here. You've got Gurgi, you've got Alon, we've got Taran. You've got Dolly the dwarf, who I I must have dwarfs <laughs> wrong in my head, because in my head, like dwarves are like these lumpy little furry guys. This is another handsome dwarf. This is another beautiful dude. Gimli dwarves can have dwarves. sex with elves, <laughs> Inks. <laughs> it is dude. a real thing. Peter <laughs> I, Jackson I'm, I'm, is a real I am the, thing. I am the one who is the this ball. Dwarf, yeah. This dwarf is all also gigantic. Yes. He is like, huge. He looks like he's seven feet tall. Yeah, he, Dolly <laughs> is like this this grumpy, you know, little, you know, he's he's the go to guy. He's the guy that like you can always count on to show up to work and get the job done. But he's gonna grumble every step of the fucking way while he while he fixes the pipes, you know, in <laughs> in the bathroom after Taran destroyed yet another uh, white cauldron. Um, Dude, she did and, these on acrylic. Yeah, and oh, in the background wow. is is uh, is Fluter's giant cat that he rides. So yeah, she did this with acrylics and some gouache, probably for the uh, glazing there. Dude, but, acrylics um, always amaze me. Look how vibrant the colors are. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're great. She said on her website that she experiments with oil. I don't know about these particular pieces, but I've got a link to her website here, and it's going to take you pretty much to her description of uh, her style and her techniques. Again, I don't have a picture of her, but her website's great, and she is a master, and we will see her again. Yes. Oh, man. So, so we're leaving Sega, and we're going to the role-playing book now. Yeah, we are now We are now in 2011. We're, Dude, we've, look at this King. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> yeah. 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 Bruno. Yeah. Yeah. Dear little boy, I'm going to crush you. This Horn you. King is played by Dwayne Johnson. Um, <laughs> and by the way, I'm just going to say this also. Uh, the horn on his saddle is very suggestive. Uh, oh. <laughs> I'm gripping well, my yeah. saddle. And he's looking. He's, why he's why looking don't you go ahead right and describe out, this whole he's, thing? He, he's looking right out of the cover at you, and 
He's got his hands like tucked by his hips with his big curling protruding thing coming out between his legs. <laughs> his like, mouth is kind of open. Boy. I will find you. And his 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 forearm is completely red, like he got a bad yeah. tan. He's got like yeah. the worst oh, farmer's tan I've ever yeah. seen in my life. Um, so I, this definitely makes uh, Tar- Tarn look more like a little boy. So yeah. what we have, right. we've got Tarn in the foreground. He's in the shadow of a tree. He's just a little scamp of a guy, dirty, filthy clothes. He's sort of crouching there among Dude, some Dude, he is gonna get pummeled. By this horn, and then he <laughs> yeah, is going yeah. to be turned into goo uh, with his giant red fists. Oh. <laughs> and his his uh, run, Tarn, his, run! <laughs> his run. vaping horse. That yeah, horse is horse. vaping hard. <laughs> um, yeah, he need to. Ch- he's got to get a new horse at the next waypoint because this, this one's lungs are shot. Hey, bro, you can't um, keep doing I, I that. Like we're gonna this. make it. We're gonna miss our gym appointment. No, bro. I, I like it. It is digital. My my thing. My thing with this is this looks very much like. It's going to be on the young adult section and, you know, uh, Barnes and Noble's books, right. you know, it's sort of uh, what you expect from a young adult book. You know, it's well, not it's not really I mean, it's nicely done. The lighting is really good. There's a great shadow um, emanating out from the horse. Don't like um, the lettering. Do not like the lettering. Oh, yeah. I, I think I think the lettering's fine. Nope. Lettering's not cool. Yeah. I like the. I even like the little border they did. Uh, I don't like the, the border, border either. has. Well, the border has um, has the liar. It's not it, funny. It has the liar. It has some different things. A uh, little. Um, it's got the cauldron. It's got some some things from the book built in around the mm-hmm. border, which it I think shouldn't, is pretty cool. It shouldn't have been transparent. Cool. I think the transparency. It's too. It's too messy. It, like it. I don't know. Well, it's, yeah. 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 And, and 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 maybe they should have done a different color. But the weird thing about this is this is David Wyatt. Again, we are going to see David Wyatt over and over again because he's another master of fantasy. But the weird thing is, is he doesn't just do digital. He doesn't just do digital paintings. Here he is in the woods. Again, I couldn't get his face, but I can get him in the woods doing, um, you know, acrylic or oil. Yeah. Oh, dude, um, he's mixing mushroom oil to, to oh, put yeah. on his painting. So when you look yeah. at it, you trip out. There's flute on the wind, um, <laughs> and he he's a very good he's a very good artist with traditional medium, but he yeah. did not do that for for these books. Um, I've got a link to his website, and you can go look through his illustrations, and they're fantastic, especially the ones where he does traditional media. Well, this other one over here is fantastic. It's so it's cool. This looks yeah, like incredible. something out of Lord too? of the Rings, dude. Yeah, digital. This is also digital. This is this is the High King, the the final book. Um, well, how come this digital just, looks this like real paint? This doesn't look. This doesn't look digital at all. Are you sure? So we just looked it up on the website. He does not say uh, what the High King is done in. I do know that the other one is digital mm. because that was uh, well. I could be wrong, but on the Perdane fandom, um, they mm. they have that listed as a digital piece. Gotcha. Um, but it may just be referring to the border again. It, it was weird to me that he would be um, using digital, but again, digital is a tool, and yep. um, you know a lot of these guys are masters at at many <clears throat> at many arts, and yeah. Um, yeah, this is the final book here, uh, the High King, and, and here's the point where I ask, um, Bringineer, what was your favorite book? Well, let's see, I read them a couple of years ago. I really like the scope of the High King. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that one was really um, interesting. You know, it's the culmination of all the books. It's the one that has um, it's this sense of doom, you know, pervading over right. it. You know, as the the um, companions get uh, separated and then finally come back together at the end. Um, I yeah. really like that one. I really like Terran the Wanderer because he learns so many oh, valuable lessons. That one's lessons. my favorite. Um, I mean, the first, the first book has so many, um, excellent, uh, scenes in there, particularly escaping, um, the Horn King's castle, um, at the end, taking the sword from the crypt and then having the castle fall apart. Yeah. That was interesting. That was actually a long way who did that. Yeah. A long way. That's right. Yeah. Uh, um, So these books, I haven't read these. Is, Is this done in more of sort of the. The Tolkien esque, you know, Very high much fantasy, so. or is this more yeah. sort of like our, you know, our? I, I'm assuming this it's is, not sword and sorcery type kind this of. This is yeah. This no. is more. This is 
you know, again, if you're a kid and you can't tackle Tolkien, tackle Lloyd Alexander. I mean, yeah. they're... They they say that he drew from Welsh uh, mythology, which he did, but there are some very Tolkien-esque things that happen. Um, besides uh, uh, Prince Gwydion's like uh, chocolate chip cookie fart, he is he is Aragorn. He's a ranger. Yeah. He's yeah. A, he's a prince who's out there tramping around. He's very much like Aragorn. Um, he's who Terran wants to be. Yeah, Gollum is very much. Um, in, you know, embodied Gurgi. in Gurgi. Yeah. Um, Alonwi is kind of a unique character, but, um, you know, she's she's very, got a really strange way of looking at the world. Um, Fluter Flam is another kind of a cool character. He he yeah. himself seems like he's based on Lloyd Alexander himself. Um, even the physical attributes um, to Fluter is very much like Lloyd. Yeah. Um, but again, there's a lot of things that happen. I mean, at the end of spoiler alert, at the end of uh, the High King, they even go off to their island of Avalon at the very end. Yep. Oh, um, you know, kind of, kind of like at the end of of the the Tolkien series and Tilt the um, Great Havens, yeah. But the, he's taking the same ingredients. He's making a different thing out of it. Yep. And the biggest difference is you've got Tarin, who's not the chosen one. He's not the chosen one. He's not special. Um, he doesn't get a magical sword. He doesn't get, like, powers. He's just this shit kid who has to, like, put on his fucking pig boots, you know, his pig shit boots every day. Oh, no, where'd he get and, the pig boots? And, and, and grow up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, and, and what's a cool, little, a cool little thing here in this painting is you see his banner is yeah, a, a white right. pig. Is a little white pig, pig for keeper, Henry. Uh, yeah. Banner, yeah. So it's 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 full full circle. He's 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 still holding on to his roots. But my favorite book is Tar and the Wanderer because there's some um, yeah there and he's not so much of a shit in that and he's doing no. a little bit of soul searching. Well, the thing is, like he he has so many like he learns a lot of awful lessons in that a lot one, of in awful lessons. One. Yeah, and uh, which is great. You need to have what, that in a book he, yeah. series. That it's elevates a book series. Annoying. And you know who's with him the entire time? Elanwy. The Gergster. Oh, the, the Gergster. Gergster. That's right. The Gergster yeah. is there. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish this this show out this episode out with a, with a little strange little one off, a little <laughs> treasure that I found here. This, this is, just looks like used toilet paper. Yeah, Dude. let's go back in time. <laughs> let's go back in time what? from the 2000s <laughs> back to 1970. This is this is a taco. I love this lasagna teriyaki <laughs> yeah. hamburger. Yeah, and <laughs> this is by Brian Froud, um, the the same guy who lent his style to uh, the the Dark Crystal. Yeah, uh, what? Uh, the same guy who lent his style to a lot of the Jim Henson designs and and had a lot of. What was he smoking when he did this? Dude, Bay look folk. at Gurgi. Dude, look okay, at Gurgi. I'm just okay. waiting for his penis Tame. to extend out. Like Dude, a dog. I know. He looks like he's just about <laughs> to right. throw his Tame semen tell at us you. About this cover. Explain the cover. <laughs> Okay, uh, Brengenier, you take this one. This one's brown. You this need is, to do this, this one. Is Bre- this is Brengenierian brown, like to the max. Uh-huh. This is mottled, <laughs> uh, mottled poo-poo pee-pee. <laughs> <laughs> the poo-poo, the pee-pee. This is chamber pot uh, <laughs> swill for your oil. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Okay, so, okay. okay. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna jump in okay. here. No, no, um, no. So what, what you got? We've got, you got a Celtic weave, a yeah. Celtic weave in the background, and inside is an awesome battle. You got some great looking warriors back here, um, <laughs> locked in Mortal Combat, right? Now, uh, in the foreground, you have um, uh, the pig, big girl, uh, the, uh, big, big old, mama. big old mama pig. She got the sitting, teats. Uh, sitting atop. The pig. <laughs> you have what this is up with those legs? <laughs> this Gurgi, whose legs are just splayed. And, yeah. and one, one of his feet He's is doing a very uncomfortable gesture. Yeah. His, like he wants to grip something. He really wants to grip something with that foot. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you want him to. <laughs> He's telling Tarn if he doesn't get a banana, he's going to grab something else. Yeah. And he doesn't want to see what comes out of the peel. <laughs> <laughs> look at Tarin. Look at Tarin. Which Roman Tarin, dude? His Spartan sword and yeah. uh, 
his giant his his giant shield. I don't know if the skull in the background with the 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 um, incredible Celtic horns is supposed yeah, to be the horn. I think king. that's supposed to be the horn king. But this is like the anime horn king, where there's no physical way yeah. he could lift his head. No, um, without the power of animation. Yeah, this is. Um... I, I quite like this one actually. I love the this, font too. This is so. Uh, this is so Brian Froud, but this is one of his early pieces. This yeah, is before, I want to see. He was still I want to see the around. rest of the books. I want to see the rest of the books that he did. Well, this, this is just one. one. This is just a, a bizarre one-off, and there are really? more bizarre the, one-offs, and there are more depictions of these covers, and there are even more covers that we did not cover tonight because. Um, Damn, you know, such we, a cool run. We can run, only go inks. so far on this journey. Yep. Um, but again, you can see how the covers change through the the, the decades, um, and and how that era influenced yeah. the the art. You've got the, the the storybook flat art into the Frazetta esque. You know, Frazetta was you know at his prime at this time. Everyone wanted to be yep. him, and then you're going into the the hewn. Um, Pocket books the, that are just the fine these, art, these beautiful yeah. fine art, like um, you know, tome like little testaments to fantasy, and then we go into the the '90s Sega art with the um, the the high realism, but the the beautiful color palette, neon, and then, yeah, and then into the 2000s where we've got the more gritty, the more the the steroid taking. Um, Horn Awkward King, uh, the, <laughs> the, the 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 scope of of a true master um, at his craft, but um, you know, doing these books for a, a more modern age. And lastly, that piece of toilet paper that you the, find wadded up in the corner the Taco of the Bell egg potty. salad. I'll do my <laughs> you, best. You went, <laughs> you went I'll to do my best to do a cover for you. <laughs> yeah. This is oh. like <laughs> the, 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 this really is is a great little one off, and you think Brian Brian Froud, he you know, again he lent his style to a lot of the the Jim Henson stuff, and you can see the com the, the conflict going on here in the cover itself. Now we're not talking about the battle, we're talking about the different styles that he's the, messing with. The style that's going on here. <laughs> this is this <laughs> this is hamburger teriyaki taco lasagna. That's right. And, um, you got you guys. You got to read these books. Read them with yeah, your babies. Yeah, they're great. Um, they're great. Inks, I gotta is, ask you. Uh, yeah. W was it the covers that drew you into this series? Um. Or had you heard about it before? I'm curious. I, I I I had heard about it. I had seen the movie. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, yeah. When I was young. Yeah. When I was really young, I had seen the movie and was like, "That's kind of cool." Um. And we were going on a road trip, and I got that box set, and I decided to to get into it. And um, I think I read all the way to Castle uh, Lear, which, hmm. I, again, in the beginning, it, it's kind of hard to follow Tarn because he is a little shit kid. He's 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 making a lot of the same mistakes that you would make as a kid. But it, it's almost like if you take a kid and just fling him into a fantasy and he starts behaving like he is the chosen one, but he's not the chosen one. You're Bucky Barnes. That's <laughs> Captain America. You're supposed to bring him the sword. You got to shovel um, the pig shit. You gotta but, wear but the big the, feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the end of the series, right. you you appreciate him so much more because um, he was not the chosen one, but he he earned his place as the high king. Fantastic, and folks, on that note, we appreciate you. We are so excited about being here in Fantasy February with all of you, new listeners, old listeners, mm. Patreon listeners. It's so yeah. fun. To be able to just have this month dedicated to just picking up the mace and the axe and just going into the past, the into the things we love. Um, and just <laughs> and the lumpy cauldron. Yeah, in the lumpy cauldron and hacking away <laughs> and revealing uh, who's behind these awesome covers. Uh, and we would love to hear from you what your fantasy covers are. Um, yeah. Send us. We'd love to dialogue, talk about yeah. them. Who knows? We might even talk about them in a future episode. Um, but regardless, we would love it. If you reach out to us, you can find us at cover decoder at gmail.com. You can yeah. also message us, uh, on Instagram at cover decoder. Please go on there and follow us and like us. If you have a minute, there's tons of awesome art from, uh, our, our, our voice inks and brand engineer here. Um, we would really appreciate that. If you feel so inclined, you can check out our Patreon. It's $2. Yes. It's $2. $2. 
and join it's, the cult. Yes, I bought an avocado today that costs more than our membership. Than that, than One that extra episode. Sadness avocado for yeah. over $2, folks. Green mush. And I'll yeah. tell you what, that $2 is going to get you, I think right now, like five hours of content. Okay. Easily, easily. Yes. Uh, and we have a lot of fun on there. Uh, and we have some pretty fun things coming up in the future. So please check that out. Uh, it would, it would uh, yes. really help us out a lot. And we'd appreciate it. Uh, and yeah, just please send us, uh, send us your thoughts, send us your messages, whatever you have for us. We would love well, to hear from you. Speaking of Patreon, we have to induct a new member into the call. Oh, yes. oh, we have a yes. ceremony. Yes. Uh, yes, begin the fanfare. Begin. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Lloyd. You have slipped through the grasp of the cheap CGI trolls and taken up the coin to travel faster than the speed of Legolas's Trans Am. Aboard the cover cultist (laughs) tanker in search of creative guzzoline in a photo montage wasteland to escape the Gornak and emerge in a grotto filled with the legendary wine of electric guitar and a banquet of Ghibli-esque delicacies. (laughs) Michael Lloyd, welcome to the cover call. Yes! 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 Oh, that is so awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, And yes, folks, like we said, you can join Michael Lloyd as well. And remember, if you wish to fight the Gornak, heft your shield of coverdom and keep your sword of art sharp at all times. Yes! Yes!